test, test one, two. Test one, hey, two. Um, tonight we have an ordinance committee meeting. Is it going through? We're just going to keep moving forward. Okay. <clears throat> Randy, do you have something you want to say? Yes, I want to make a statement. First, I want to apologize. I'm going to have to duck out for a previous scheduled meeting also. But I want to be on record with this uh, statement. I'm in support of the school impact fees and all other fees that's going to be needed for adverse impacts for these uh, large multi-subdivisions coming in. One of the reasons, guys, whatever this amount's going to be, I know it has to be negotiated, and it could be as high as a third of the profit that developer is going to is going to receive. My my issue is that it's imperative that we put this on the front end, not for the builders, not for the uh, mom and pop that's trying to build a home, but for the subdivision developers. And the reason it has to be up front is because the infrastructure has to be done up front. You have to pay up front. If that developer's gonna leave with $60 million, leave my parish and go somewhere else in another state and leave me with trying to raise taxes to pay for a school or to buy property or to hire teachers or to provide flood protection, that's not gonna work. I, had, I received a call today from someone that's against this idea and he's saying, man, if y'all need capital improvements, just pass a tax. I say, where you live at? But anyway, the point is, we don't need capital improvements. We need the developer that's making a large profit on us to pay for the infrastructure ahead of time. And that's all I'm saying. If you wait till you start building a house two years from now, three years from now, it's too late. The infrastructure it takes three to five years to purchase property, build a school, hire teachers, to provide a, a drainage plan for sewer improvements all that takes time you can't do it after the fact and i want to make sure that the council understands whatever we do in my opinion it has to go to the developer he says they're going to pass it on down i can understand them passing it on down but if they sell a lot for forty thousand dollars and it costs us twenty thousand dollars more that he's got to put on the lot that person knows when he buys that lot what he's paying. If he don't want to pay 60, he's going to go somewhere where he can pay 40. And that's the most fair way that I see it. And I just wanted that to be on the record. Thank y'all. Good job, Randy. Appreciate that. <clears throat> hey, come on up, Mr. Cecil. Just don't forget to state your name, and address, and all that wonderful, beautiful stuff. Cecil Harris. I'm with the Living Superior School Board. Uh, I'm just here tonight to inform you that we have uh, put together a new resolution. We've given y'all one already to give you a range, but what we've done now is we've given you an exact figure, and we base that on a number of things, uh, transportation, buses, fuel, cost of a house, square footage, all that sort of thing. So when you get the documents, you can go through it, but we can't share any of that with you right now because it has to go before our Budget and Goals Committee, which will be monday and then the, before the board for approval on thursday so we'll have something for you exact then so uh, but i do agree with mr randy there that you know <clears throat> i had mentioned to you guys a long time ago twenty thousand dollars and y'all like choked <laughs> but but it was not for a school impact fee it was for the whole governmental agencies because we need you know, you're going to have to have a sewer plant. You're going to have to have another school. You're going to have to have roads. I mean, a lot goes into these impact fees, not just for the school. So that's what we were told you all in the beginning. We want to be part of this whole global impact fee, not just a school impact fee, because it is your fee. And so whatever you come up with and whatever you decide, that's your fee. It's not ours. We're just making a recommendation to you. Any questions? Mom? I know you can't divulge anything, but... Uh on that amount, but y'all have a task force that was formed, then you're gonna be pretty close to what it's gonna affect, how it's gonna affect the citizens of our parish, right? Right. And that's and that's one, what we're interested right. in. Right, and one recommendation too, uh, you might think about this, is there needs to be an inflation clause built in there too, because you know, you might have $10,000 today, but it might be cost more 10 years from now. So you might all think of building that into your, whatever y'all come up with too, so. Okay. Yeah. I, hold on, Steve. I um, I can go ahead and say a few things. Um, 
number one, I just want to say I love Livingston Parish School System, and I know how precious it is to our community, and I want it to stay strong as it is today. I know my kids are getting a, a wonderful education at the public school system in Livingston Parish, and uh, I don't want to talk too much about that because I'll get emotional. It's, 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 it's how the school system is just so important to me and my family and everybody in Livingston Parish. It's one of the greatest things about Livingston Parish, that and it's a safe, secure community to live in. But um, I just wanted to make sure we covered a few bases. I learned a lot about impact fees when this subject came up uh, several months ago. And, um, you know, in the, I know y'all gonna be passing a resolution to send over to us with the amount and, and justifying that amount. But it's to my understanding that, you know, the amount of money that you come up with for a school impact fee needs to be uh, justified, right? Some type of study or some type of, um, you know, data collection to, to kind of support the amount of money that you uh, plan to collect, right? And I just want to make sure it's, that's to my understanding. So, I mean, do you, do you, all, do you all understand that? We also, do you all agree? Yeah, we've done that. So. Okay, good, good. And, and then, and then um, to me, as far as distributing the funds, when we when we are referencing a school impact fee, you know, yeah, it would be the Livingston Parish, I guess, council, Livingston Parish administrative uh, team to collect that fee, right. and then the school impact fee, the set amount that y'all had decided would go to y'all. My understanding would be f so that you all would, uh, you know, follow all laws associated with uh, distributing impact fees. You know, when it comes to you know spending the funds, you know, um, I've did a little research and it's my understanding that the impact fees need to be, uh, I guess you could say distributed to the area uh, that's, that's collect, impacted. That's it, collect, right. If right. It's, if it's a French settlement subdivision, that's where the money stays. If it's a Watson or Denham Spring, wherever that money's collected, that's where it stays. Right, right, right. Y'all have that ability, Mr. Cecil? Have that ability, sure. Yes, I mean, yeah. so it's not like a general fund where it gets, Right. So you have yeah, you each, earmark funds right, each, for a certain. Each each school district has a its a, own what we call a second sales tax fund, and money goes into that fund. And doesn't cross unless <clears throat> emergency or something. Oh, it's, like it's that. divided up. It's divided up by well, the way we do it. It's divided up by pupil uh, attempt population. Right. But we can put that money in those districts where it goes. Yeah. Right. We sure can. And I'm I, and I'm just asking. Do you have the ability to? Uh, move that move funds to another if if, if need be i mean have y'all done it in the uh, past it's kind of hard to do sometimes i mean money i guess can be moved but most of the time that's what people don't understand when money is earmarked for a certain category it has to stay in that category we can't move it around i right. mean like for example we get federal funds that money has to be spent on special ed or whatever it's right and for. i I'm not and it's the same with the parish but right. i was just curious right. you know if i mean if we collect money for something in a certain area of the parish you know it's kind of we I'm obligated to use it for the whole it, it kind of goes in a general fund and gets used for that that same purpose but it's used all over the parish I just didn't know if you well for example it, like if someone uh, in French settlement buys comes to Denham Springs and buys a shirt or whatever that tax money is collected but it's distributed a, a, among the parish based on the student population I see so the sales tax even it might be collected in Denham but it might it'll be distributed through the parish right. okay right. <clears throat> Uh, but if in what instance would say funds, I guess none of the sales tax would be s for that specific area, would it? I don't think so. Okay, I'm not sure. But I don't I'm just. So. Is there anything right now that can you give me some example where you collect funds and it, it's earmarked for that district? Well, for example, like in Denham Springs, when we bonded money for our athletic facility, that money had to be spent in Denham Springs for the athletic facility. So it depends on where you money bonded. Yeah. Bonded. Okay. Yeah. That's you, uh, you, you, yeah. You, but then that's that that money you bonded that was for a sales tax, correct? That's from millages property. Mill tax. Millages was right. that collected for the parish or just that particular? Just district? for Denham Springs district. Oh, so it was it, that millage was set for that district. Right. Okay. Right. And so therefore, you used it for that at right. that facility. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Of course, y'all know way more about this than me. I didn't mean to cut y'all. Did you? No, no. I, that, I just I, I'm I'm learning here. So I mean, I mean, my thought is is um, yes, yeah, school impact fees would be um, you know collected uh, for a certain district and and uh, distributed in that district that's impacted, right? But right. the funds that are allowed, you know, other funds that are allowed to be 
you know, distributed across the entire parish, you know, maybe it would, it would help off, off the impact fees would help offset that, right? So it possibly could, for example, like uh, school buses. I mean, right. that, that money might free up money that we could maybe use right. someplace else. That's what I'm thinking, uh, yeah. Yeah, it could be done that. Yeah. It's just basically freeing up that pot of money if we're collecting here, but you guys would be the ones collecting the impact fees and just distributing it to us, so. All right. Um, <clears throat> next step is to receive your resolution and then, from there. you know, yeah. go from so there. I would ask let, me, let me ask you a question. Go Are ahead. you um, going to ask for impact fees from the sheriff, from the drainage, from the all these other entities too? My thought is that's yet to be decided. There's, there's a discussion. I talked to a councilman today about that who was in favor of that. Um, it's possible that we bring in a, uh, a, a planner in the future to uh, help us with uh, a better understanding of, and, and maybe a study to uh, address, you know, address the impact fees for other, uh, you know, utilities and things of that nature. I think y'all have y'all study. Um, we don't have ours yet. We don't. We we, we don't have a, uh, any justification to charge a certain amount for drainage or uh, you know sewer or anything like that. You know, fire departments. We have some ideas of what we'd like to collect, but I don't think we have that that study that justification on how much to charge just yet. So we may have to wait and kind of put that whole uh, you know collect all that data and put that study together before we actually implemented implemented. The impact fees on the other stuff, you know. Now, um, my thought, and I guess we can talk more about what others think. My thought if, is, is if y'all are ready to go, you know, I would support the school board, you know, this decision. So, um, the reason I'm saying that is it, because you know we didn't pass a sales tax for our employees, and so I'm just I'm afraid the parish, if you want, if you go to them to raise their millages to build a sewer plant or something like that, they're not going to approve that either. So that's why this impact fee is important for all aspects of government, not just the school board. Um, Mr. Cecil is right. Uh, we do have an agenda item this, no, next Thursday. Yeah, Thursday coming up, we have an agenda item to hire a planner. And if that passes, we just start the process. What the chairman said, Mr. Mack is saying is that y'all so far ahead of us in the process that he has no problem in moving alone to help y'all get right. that, so. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Cecil, thanks for answering the questions. I appreciate it. All right, is, is there anybody else that would like to speak on impact fees? Anybody? Mr. Gerald Burns, come on up. In case nobody knows who this is, this is Mr. Gerald Burns. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come speak to you folks. Uh, my name is Gerald Burns. I'm the chairman of the Livingston Parish uh, Master Plan Review Committee. Uh, let's don't forget about traffic. You know, we, the traffic is <coughs> horrendous in this parish. I don't, I don't care where you go. It's backed up in peak travel times. Um, this is all... All the traffic problems we have right now is backed up. I don't care if it's on Poise Club Road, Florida, Florida Boulevard, Juven, Walker South. It, that traffic right now, congestion, is present day growth. It doesn't even factor in to what you have right now of what's coming. And it's significant uh, growth coming, especially south of I-12, between Walker South and the interstate. Uh, we need money for 20% matching f uh, funds for state and federal highways. Uh, we don't get much highway infrastructure in Livingston Parish because uh, we don't have that 20% 20, 20%. Uh, I do want to thank our state representatives and uh, Mr. Buddy Mincy and uh, Rogers Pope and others for getting us capital outlay money, okay? And that is basically all we get, and all the funds that, that the state gets 
uh, gasoline tax and federal monies has to flow through the MPO. That's the Metropolitan Planning Organization. And that's how we get it. And we don't get much, maybe 15 million a year, and we need 30. So we need money for studies, environmental studies, and so forth. Uh, let me point out that um, we don't have any money dedicated in this parish for capacity projects, either parish or state or federal. Uh, you got a 1% sales tax for parish roads and 25% 20, of that goes to the jail. But that, that money cannot be used on widening roads and building new parish roads. It's only used for maintenance of existing roads and some lateral, some lateral drainage. Um, we have a backlog in Lewisham Parish that we, the Master Planning Committee has come up with, and I've, I've given to y'all in the meetings before. And there's two things we have not added on here that we're going to add shortly is uh, widening uh, Forest Club Road from I-12 to, Flor uh, to Florida and a four-lane roundabout at Florida and 4-H. And that's a total of 17 million. So we got, we're going to have about, this is going to be around 350 million. And if you go all over this parish and you start talking about other roads uh, in Watson, you might want to widen uh, Highway 16 from the red light in Watson, maybe three miles north, maybe to the Oak Hill subdivision. But we got roundabouts in front of Frog's Restaurant and Walker. Walker North that's needed everywhere in this parish. So you could probably be talking $400 million. That's what present day growth. And so we need to factor in the new growth. Um, if we had impact fees five years ago, significant impact fees, we could, that with all the phenomenal growth on Forest Club Road especially, uh, to the south of the interstate, that we would have enough money in this grove in this parish to maybe build a four-lane roundabout of Florida Boulevard to help all the folks going north. And that traffic is horrendous in the morning. As I sit there and that intersection in Washington is backed up tremendously. And it just the red lights are not synced right, I don't think. They less two lanes and you got 30, 34 or 35 vehicles, that's it. That's all can get through that intersection going north and most of that's going East Baton Rouge Parish. So if we had, if we had this a long time ago, we would get, we would get further down the road. Um, I don't know what to ask for on the impact fees. I just know that these, these figures here were given to us by Louisiana DOTD. These are hard numbers, exactly what it takes for four lane roads roundabout and building two new interchanges in this parish. Um, one being about two miles east of Walker and the other is um, Forge Club Road westbound, whether it would be on off ramps there or full interchange, I don't know. So we told and constantly in these DOTD meetings that Federal Highway Administration does not allow any new interchanges, half interchanges or full interchanges within one mile of an existing interchange. But I've done a lot of research and that's, that's not a true statement. They all, yeah, they're everywhere. Drusilla Lane is one of them. That's a half interchange. So they are out there. So I'm just, we need as much as we can, but I'm gonna make a suggestion y'all that, uh, that you add that we get $2,500 per residential and customer and uh, commercial customers to go to traffic impact fees. And that's a good starting point. So if you can give us more, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate you, Mr. Gerald. I just want to say that I agree with Mr. Gerald. I think that our infrastructure is in, 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 insufficient right now. And, um, you know, it, it takes a long time to get, you know, down those uh, streets to get onto the uh, interstate down there, uh, you know, 4-H Club Road and Jubin and, and all these roads. Uh, you know, with the rapid growth that Livingston Parish is experiencing, 
you know, it's, it's going to be a lot worse in the future if, if action's not taken to kind of. Uh, I have uh, written a white letter on why we need the 4 H Club Road interchange and widening the 4 H Club Road to Florida and you interchange. And I'm not quite through with it, so not released for press yet, okay? But it'll, it'll, it'll shock you that the growth is there and the growth is coming. And I would say that Livingston <laughs> Parish is going to be, we're at 148,000 people on the, uh, the new amended uh, 2023 uh, census. And with the growth that's coming, <laughs> we're going to be in a crisis if we can't get some, our roads, wider roads capacity projects that's roads that you can widen to increase the capacity of the vehicles uh, we got a problem we need to work on thank you thank you mr chair i appreciate you coming come on up hello everyone i'm kelly hennessy i'm also on the livingston parish school board and i want to echo what mr burns has said I've attended DOTD meetings, even some with Mr. Burns, and I know the impact with the roads, how bad it's getting, and with the growth of all the new developments as well. In the Watson area, which I represent, a lot of developments are on the way that have already been approved. We're aware of that. I just <coughs> left a group. I've been meeting with teachers as part of this task force that has been put together, and I've been meeting with teachers around the parish. I just left a group of six, and I was rushing to get over here, but one sentiment that they wanted to pass on to you was please, please consider, especially when, as Mr. Harris mentioned, we get this resolution in place as soon as possible, please consider these impact fees as soon as possible because the classroom sizes are growing substantially and they're doing more with less. And the materials, I can tell you from working on a project right now at Live Oak High School, the materials, as you all well know, cost so much. Everything's going up and I don't really see anything coming down anytime soon. So please give that careful consideration whenever you're asked for this as well because it's gonna benefit all of us for the parish as a whole, and I think that's the bottom line. That's what's near and dear in all of our hearts is to make a difference, to also alleviate some of the traffic congestion, and I could see sharing a portion of that because it's needed. But please, please do not forget about our schools when it comes to these impact fees because it's desperately needed. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Ms. Kelly. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Come on up, Mr. Cecil. schools are. An elementary school runs about $25 million. A middle school anywhere from 35 to 45 and a high school is anywhere from 80 to 90 million. That's because you got to build gymnasiums and all that sort of thing. So, you know, just looking at the cost of what the school is going to cost, you know, that's quite enormous. And we're bonded out and, you know, we just can't get any more bond money to build schools. So we've got to have some help somewhere. So that's food for thought. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Cecil, I got a question. I don't. This is Mr. Cecil. I got a question. I, <coughs> so, a school that would cost about twenty-five million dollars to build. How many students could go there? Any idea? About five hundred. About five hundred. Dem Springs Elementary was built for seven hundred kids. Uh, it was twenty-five million dollars. Well, I'm sorry, it was sixteen million, but now it's, it'd be up to about twenty-five million. Uh, but it's already at six hundred fifty students. It just wow. opened. So we're almost at capacity already. So, wow. Well, yeah, so most, a lot of our schools are right at capacity, uh, especially Grace Creek is at capacity. Uh, Lewis Vincent is about 40 students short of being in capacity. So a lot of our schools in Denham Springs are at capacity or, or close to it. Uh, so, you know, the only thing we can do at the high school now is go up. We have property on 4H Club Road to build a school down there, but 90 million dollars we can't build it <laughs> you know we have the property but we can't afford to build the school so any other questions thank you for that answer mr cecil all right i i want to make a comment yeah. about the impact fees i'm absolutely in support of the impact fees um very much so i do want to say when you're putting your numbers together we we are working on having a planning professional help us with this growth but the rate of inflation 
and some kind of formula to accommodate that is huge because Mr. Gerald, 20, you know, a tra traffic means a lot to me too. $2,500 today is not the same as it was even two years ago. So to adjust, so we don't have to come back and revisit to put a formula in it to adjust that rate is, is, is huge. I just want to Bless say that. that. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Anybody else want to comment on impact fees? All right. You know, I want to say this. I want to say that while Mr. Cecil and Ms. Kelly was talking, I was jotting down some notes. We're going to need to reach out to our financial director and make sure that we are set up to be able to collect and forward these funds to, uh, to the school board when it's time to move forward. And um, so I, I don't know, Sandy, could you, could you send an email to Jennifer and make sure that she's ready to go for whenever these are collected, if we, if we, if, you know, if this passes, and just want to make sure we do our part. Say, and Mike, yeah, Mike could help. Yeah, just copy Mr. Mike, myself, and John. Any, anybody else want to talk about school impact fees? <laughs> okay. If, if nobody else wants to talk about it or y'all feel like we've, we've covered everything, let me say that. Um, I just, I just want to say this. It's really an honor to have the school board members show up tonight for the ordinance committee meeting. And I just want to do the best job I can to announce all of y'all by name and, and thank you again for coming. Over here we got uh, Mr. Ron McMorris. I just want to thank you so much for all you do for our children. Ms. Kelly Hennessy, I want to thank you as well for all you do for our for our children steve link i want to thank you very 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 much for all you do i'm, I'm very excited about the future and mr cecil harris thank you thank you for all your leadership and direction and mr jeff cox thank you for coming tonight to help us uh do the right thing and to get this right and to you know make sure we take care of our children in the future <coughs> thank you all thank you all very much for coming so tonight and y'all welcome to stay, you know, um, but we're going to talk about <coughs> zoning for the rest of the night and zoning classifications and uses and things like that, you know, and, and uh, I don't think it's going to take very long, but I mean, I just want to let you know, y'all, we really do appreciate y'all very much. We really, <coughs> really, really do. Bye. Bye. Appreciate y'all once again. And I just want to also say thanks to Mr. Gerald Burns for being faithful and so helpful to the Livingston Parish Council and Ordinance Committee. And I want to thank Mr. Jeff Ard, Councilman Jeff Ard for showing up and, and helping us go in the right direction. He's, he's been a very faithful councilman coming to these Ordinance Committee meetings. Uh, so just thank you very much for that. I second okay. that, thanks. You second it? I second that, all right. thanks. Do we, all in favor. <laughs> All right, so, all right, Livingston Parish ordinance, uh, we're talking about classifications here, um, you know, the land uses within those classifications. Uh, the ordinance committee has been working several weeks to make modifications to enhance that, to make it more clear, um, you know, so that it's, easily understood, you know, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable moving forward, okay? There's many, there's many changes, okay? If you flip through your packet, and everybody's welcome to have one, um, I don't want to go over all the changes. What I, what I want to say is that um, the changes are in blue to the best of my knowledge, okay? Uh, there's definitions in here. You know, we've talked in the past about having a definition as to what a uh, home occupation is, 
right? We've talked about, um, you know, accessory building, accessory use, you know, that's defined in our classifications. We wanted to better clarify that. We've got definitions on civic schools and just all the definitions that go along with our uses and uh, within those classifications. So this is uh, something that I think everybody should, should, you know, take a look at, pay attention to. This is gonna be introduced on the next council agenda. Um, and hopefully we get support to pass this. Um, is this just definitions? No, there's changes to um, R1, R2, the uses within those. There's changes to agricultural classification. There's changes to R2, 1.5. There's changes to the uh, classification called unclassified. I would, uh, if did you, you put this together? Did I put it together? Well, yeah, it, well, me and Caroline, you know, she was uh, the, been working her and Sandy we've been working as an ordinance committee meeting to we've communicated about these changes and um, I, I remember you know, we, some we've spoken about this. yeah and and so this um, just a, we went through it last night to make sure that the changes that we had talked about in the past were were captured and um, and so this is it you know if you got a uh, you know Something found within here is blue and it has a strike through. That means we're planning to remove it. It was here originally. We're planning to remove it. If something's in blue and it doesn't have a strike through, that meant that means we're, we're planning to add it. Okay. And um, there's many changes. And uh, so just want to say once again, go through your packet, go through this, make sure. Well, if you're okay with the changes, I guess we'll move forward. And if you're not, I guess we'll go back to the drawing board. Um, but this will be voted on soon. All right. That being said, I just want to go ahead. Does anybody have any questions? Would anybody like to talk about this? I have a, a, a question. Go ahead. It's just a, 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 a part I just flipped to, and I don't remember going over that this part, and I, and I am familiar. I'm very familiar with this. Okay. Um, the airport. Yeah. So we're going to add... Um, D3 and D4. Let, let's go. Let it's me, section 120, uh, 117, 275. All right, let me flip to that. 117, repeat that one more time. The airport section? Yeah. Classification? It's uh, 117. It? It's just adding um, gentlemen's clubs and adult video stores. I don't remember adding that. No, we didn't. Hold on, let's look at this. 117. 276. So Airport what? permitted uses. It's towards the back. 117, I'm sorry, yeah, 117, 276. Permitted uses for airports. I got a lot of pages here. Here we go. Okay, I think what happened there was uh, she was trying to be consistent. Um, and that is under not allowed. So it, before, I'm sorry, you're that's right. A, I'm okay. reading it wrong. It's okay. I see permitted uses, and then my eye jumped down and went, "Whoa, we added that." Okay, <laughs> thank you for clarifying that, Shane. Um, so that's under not allowed, right? Okay, you're right. Sorry. And, well, and we didn't want people to think that it was allowed, right? So we wanted to make sure we specifically listed it. So what okay. is that specific zoning? Is APT? Is that is that a is that We're, a I mean, the airport. The is airport, there, that's right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a zoning called airport? It is. So it wouldn't be like a C8 or nothing like that? In order to have an airport, you, the land would have to be zoned as airport. airport. Okay. Oh, it does? Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought that would have been, okay. Uh, yeah, I would think commercial I, I or industrial or, but I guess. I would have thought industrial, but okay. And, you know, that's my interpretation. And I'm fine with it. And that was in there before. We didn't really make no changes other than not allowed gentlemen's clubs and adult video stores at the airport. I'm glad I read that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Well, that's all I got, team. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I want to, I want to find my agenda and repeat this one more time. <clears throat> um, we're going to have an ordinance committee meeting and I understand that we're going to have a lot of ordinance committee meetings in the near future and I know that 
Everyone has a lot going on in their life. We appreciate everybody coming, but if you can't make it, I want you to know that it's okay, right? We'll, we'll move forward. We're gonna try to get our goals accomplished. Um, and so we're gonna have a meeting Tuesday night. It's gonna be at 5.30 in the council chambers. It's an ordinance committee agenda meeting, uh, ordinance committee meeting. And um, on that specific agenda, you know, we're gonna discuss um, agenda item 4B, 4C, 4D, 4E, and 4F. If you'd like for me to repeat that, that's um, 4B is the pink tax exemption um, proposed by Mr. Talbert. Um, 4C is the prohibition of biological males from competing in female sports in Livingston Parish. That's also uh, proposed by Mr. Talbert. And then the, uh, the allocation of revenue um, to the parish by um, Depart Department of Natural Resources on monies generated on state carbon sequestration leases, uh, carbon capture uh, leases. Uh, that's, that's proposed by Mr. Talbert. And then um, we're gonna discuss to amend ordinance LP 15-18, that's uh, Justice of the Peace and Constable Salary Provisions. We're gonna talk about that Tuesday. Um, we need to modify that ordinance. Um, so that they can receive the funds that uh, is intended for them to receive. We need to modify that ordinance. That's uh, proposed by Mr. Randy DeLatte, to the best of my knowledge. And then 4F is the uh, discussion of bonding individual council members for legal matters. Um, we're gonna talk about that Tuesday too. Who put that on there? Randy DeLatte. Okay. Any, anybody else? All right, just wanna thank everybody for coming again. Hope everybody at home has a wonderful, beautiful night. Um, we'll see y'all Tuesday. Take care, everyone. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by John Wascom, second by Aaron Sandifer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be safe. <laughs>